pas vivre sans elle. Je ne peux pas être sans elle. Ma sœur, Rose. For many years, Serge Bramley and I, Serge Bramley is a writer, he's a novelist, and once in a while, we do a project together. But we've always wanted to tell a story with photography. It's a double narration. He films while I'm doing my shooting, but because he has another angle, because after or before the shoot, he spends time with his people, with the, with the actors, with the models, and asks them to do different things. It's another narration of the same story. I had this idea of this girl who was crossing all these different worlds, all these different universes, and she had to be looking for something, so she was looking for her twin sister. My father was an art expert, but Mostly he was very close to the surrealist people. André Breton was his friend, Man Ray was his friend. I was raised with these strange, I wouldn't say they were much fun, but I mean they had a fun mind. And I always wanted to give a tribute to that moment, that incredible moment in France in between the two wars, where it must have been wonderful to have been an artist. No, surrealism was very important. There's Dali, of course. Dali and the clocks and the soft clocks was very important. There's a lot of Max Ernst also with the birds. There's, of course, a lot of Marcel Duchamp. There's Rose. Rose is Marcel Duchamp. There's the chess game, of course. Marcel Duchamp playing chess with a naked woman. And the chess player, Marcel Duchamp, was played by a friend of mine who's the art critic of Le Monde. So there's all these little games. La mariée mise à nu, which of course is not a mariée for Marcel Duchamp. I think if I remember well, it's a window. My mariée is a real mariée. I mean, she's, it's just a beautiful girl in a wedding dress, being, her clothes being torn by three guys. Paris is everywhere with its most glamorous places, with its most dark places, with Paris and the arts, Paris and the monuments, Paris and the sex, all kinds of dreamy Paris. And a lot of it doesn't exist anymore, but we had to reinvent it. And we worked underneath Paris, we worked on the roofs. The roofs of Paris are the most beautiful roofs in the world, but we worked on all these levels, you know, the catacombs and the roofs of the opera. We just run around Paris for months, knocked on somebody's door, rang a bell because we thought from that window we could have a great view on this place that we wanted to see and people opened their doors. I was looking for a dirty, very dirty Alice in Wonderland. So I looked at about a hundred different young girls and she was from Antwerp and was a contemporary dancer and a model and she could sing and we did a test and she was totally at ease with whatever I asked her, took off her clothes, started dancing naked in the middle of the room and, and, and she was well. She can be very beautiful and very ugly at some moments, which that, that's what I love about beauty. It's when it's not perfect, you know. There's some angles where she wasn't pretty and that was great and then she became so beautiful. I mean, you know, she did the street tease in the subway. She, did, she didn't care, you know, we were in the middle of the street and I would say, you know, Inga, now it's your moment. And she would just go about doing the crazier things and singing in the middle of Pigalle at, at midnight. That freedom was absolutely inspiring. She was very inspiring. When I work on a project like that, I like people to come to play a role, to play a part. It's not only because they're famous. Of course, it's fun to see Azidine Alaya being a psychiatrist and having Naomi as a patient or Charlotte Rampling as a bum on the subway. Or, Of course, it adds to it a lot, but, but they come because they're friends, you know. And I like to mix people I find on the street, beautiful girls who are models, actresses, because that's my life. I've always been fascinated by women. Since I was a child, I was fascinated by women. My father was fascinated by women. He had 55 mistresses all over the place, and I hated them. But I had to admit that they were beautiful. 
and I was this ugly little girl, really ugly, very short, very fat. And as I grew up, falling in love with my father, of course, which is a bit simplistic, but I saw all these beautiful women around. Because I couldn't offer myself to his eyes, that wasn't good enough for him. I was going to try and offer him some beautiful women. He was my first fan. He started looking at me when I photographed women. I think we always talk about ourselves. I mean, this, my projects have always been about questions that I'm asking myself. And, you know, instead of going to church or going to a psychiatrist or going to my parents, I have no more parents, I take my camera and, and I go find things for myself. This is the privilege of being an artist. But on this one, I went further. I went further into my childhood dreams, nightmares, my obsessions, my fantasies, my fears. I mean, I put it all in there. I always review myself. I think all these pictures I put up on the walls are sort of self-portraits in a way, in a, but I never did a real self-portrait. I don't show myself as myself, but this time, yes. I'm a writer with images. I always start my projects with words. I make lists, lists of things. And surrealism is very much about words. You twist the words, you give them another meaning, you turn them into something else. And from a word, you get to an image. And that game I always played, but this time even more. I used the computer not to improve people's faces or to, you know, take off a wrinkle or something. But for the first time, I used it in an artistic way. The surrealists, they would take scissors and do collage and cut bits and pieces. Well, I did some, you know, I did some digital collage. It's a difficult road to go about a day of shooting because I ask a lot from the people. I ask a lot of trust, you know, I ask for a carte blanche. When they come here, they have to sign with their blood, you know, there's no going back. They cannot say after a day, well, finally, we did do that, but we didn't want to, do it. it's too late. Don't come, but if you do come, give it to me.